are listening to the Healthy Christian Women Podcast. Brought to you by Fit Plus Faith, the podcast for Christian women to grow healthier in their mind, body, and spirit. Jumpstart your health with your complimentary mind, body, and spirit detox checklist at healthychristianwomen.com slash detox. That's healthychristianwomen.com forward slash detox. Here's your host, Dr. Melody Stevens. Hello and welcome to the Healthy Christian Women podcast. I am your host, Dr. Melody Stevens, and this is episode 21. So excited to bring this to you today, talking about allowing our transformation. And this is our transformation in all areas, not just a physical transformation, which many of us want and desire with our bodies, but also our spiritual transformation, our emotional and mental health transformation transforming as we walk this journey with God, transforming more and more into the likeness of Jesus. That's in the end what it is all about. What God is calling us to through the scriptures is to become more and more like Jesus. And he knows that we are not him. He knows that we will never be perfect like him, that we need Jesus to be our savior, that we cannot save ourselves. But he wants us to grow into a place of spiritual maturity where we are becoming more and more like him. That is the life that he desires us to live because it it is the life that was exactly him, right? I mean, Jesus is the son and God is the father and we have the Holy Spirit, but they are all one as well. And so he understands that we cannot be God but that we can grow to a place of while being human, we're growing into transforming into the likeness of his beloved son. I was reading recently some of the devotionals from the book, My Utmost for His Highest by Oswald Chambers. And what an incredible book that is. I'm wondering when it was originally published. Let me see if I can find out. Okay, it says 1935. So originally written in 1935 and many more editions and copies made since then, helping to bring it into a little bit more um, relatable wording sometimes as well. But it is so rich. It is so deep. And you know, a friend gave this to me years ago, honestly, almost 10 years ago. And it was only until recently when I really started picking it up and diving into it a little bit more. And oh my goodness, it's just so rich. It's so good. And so I happened to be looking in it for devotionals and words and scriptures that were going to speak to this process of transformation. And ultimately, what we come to find is transformation is going to happen in our lives. The more that we allow it to happen. And the only way that will happen is the more time we are spending with God. So when the Bible is talking about abiding in him, and we're going to look at some of those scriptures today, abiding in him means remaining, meaning spending time with him. And it is in that time spent that the transformation of your life begins to take place. And you will only have transformation, in my opinion, to the degree of which you plan to abide and actually make it happen. We can always have the best intentions for ourselves, right? And I come across this a lot in in my world of helping women with their health and with their weight and towards their goals. And we all want these great things for ourselves. But typically there can be things that are holding us back, resistance that's holding us back, either from insecurities, um, from lies that we have believed are actually true when they're not, like, I don't have enough time. That's actually a lie, I'm sorry to say. But that is one of the biggest excuses that is out there. And it's like, no, actually, we all have the same amount of time. We are just choosing to use our time in different ways. And ultimately, how you spend your time is going to reveal what are your priorities in your life. And so spending time with God, when that becomes the thing that you are doing more and more, then that is where your priority is. And that is where you will begin to see and experience and feel the changes taking place that God is doing a work in your heart. But this can be something that 
can be confronting at times. It can be, well, I don't really want to go down that road or spend too much time because I, I'm afraid of my own failure again. I'm afraid to let myself down. I'm afraid to let other people down. We have all these different reasons and insecurities that hold us back. But we need to look at that and realize what is really true here. And the truth is that God is telling us in his word that you must abide in me and I in you. And then he gives us analogies such as the vine and the branches, which we talked about in the previous episode, really just this beautiful imagery of helping us understand how critical it is that if we want to be transformed, if we want to bear good fruit and to grow and to be experiencing a life of freedom, that is only going to happen by abiding, by remaining, by spending time with God. And so one of the uh, verses that it talks about in this particular passage in my utmost for his highest, it's organized by date because it's a 365 day uh, devotional. And so if you, if you have it and you go to January 23rd, that's where I'm getting this original text that we're going to read, which is coming from 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, talking about us becoming a mirror, a reflecting mirror to other people of God, and that that only happens when we are spending time in his presence, and then we begin to be transformed by that, and then ultimately it's as if we have a mirror shining that light, reflecting that light of God's love and God's transformation power to other people. And so it says, now this is... Um, 2 Corinthians 3, verses 17 and 18. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, or in other translations, there is freedom. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as the from the Lord, the Spirit. So it's saying... When we are spending time with God, it's as if we are holding up a mirror, being able to see that reflection and be transformed into the image in the mirror, into God's image from glory to glory. So from victory to victory, from moment to moment, going through this journey of life, growing closer to God, being transformed through all the seasons of your life, through all the situations and circumstances and highs and lows, God is working in all of it to bring us into a closer relationship with him, to rely on him more, to desire more of him, to want to be closer to him as he transforms us literally from the inside out. And I love this here, this verse 17 that says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And I love when I come across verses that remind me of songs because typically we will hear a song or we will learn a song or know a song, but not necessarily know from what scripture was that song actually created. And so I love when that actually happens. If I'm like reading something in the Psalms or just reading some other passage and then immediately a song will come to mind with those same words. And it's like, oh, this was the verse, the scripture that inspired that song. And that's what happened to me for this one. I don't necessarily know the name of this song, if it's called Freedom or uh, I'll have to look into what the exact name is, but it's these exact words where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So it goes, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, freedom, freedom. Shellers of mercy and grace falling on every face. There is freedom. And as I was singing that, <laughs> then the name of the song came to me, which is Freedom Reigns. But I love it because I love that song already, but I would not have known what scripture it was coming from, and it's coming from 2 Corinthians 3.17. So beautiful. So as we continue to think about what does it look like, what does it mean in order for us to 
be transformed, to allow the transformation to take place, first we need to see how much time are we spending with God and how much are we actually opening our hearts in order for him to do the transformation, right? In order for the transformation to take place at all, we've got to make some room for it. (laughs) So we can look and say, if I looked at my life and I looked at my schedule and I looked at how I'm spending the hours of my day that is equally given to everyone, where am I prioritizing and where do I see that I am giving my time to God so that he can be transforming in me? Because ladies, if we think that our transformation is going to come only from us, then we are fooling ourselves. We are missing the mark. And it is not going to be the true deepest level of internal transformation. It's going to be a superficial transformation. But you still may be messed up in your head. You still may be having not right thoughts in your mind and a poor self-image and all these other things that can still come with it if it's a superficial transformation. So let's not look to the superficial. Let's actually, if we're going to do this thing, let's do it right. And the right way is for God to do it because when he transforms you, it's going to be completely and radically different than anything else that we could do on our own. And so I love some of these other scriptures that are saying, what do we need to do in order to do this, right? He's telling us in Matthew 11, 28, come to me. He's, that's a command. He's like, a, that's a, almost like a begging you, like drawing you in, like, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Are you going to him? And if so, how are you posturing yourself when you go to him? Are you going to him in whining and complaining that you don't like your circumstances and that you don't like your body and that you don't like all these other things? Or are you coming to him with thanksgiving, with praise? with rejoicing for all he has done and in praising him for what he will do. That's a completely different way of approaching God. So come to me when you're weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. But how about we don't even wait until it's at that point? How about we just do it anyway and we make it our daily habit? We make it our life, our daily life. Our MO is to go to God in all things whether we are in rejoicing or whether we are in mourning, in all things, come to me, he says. In John 15, 4, he says, abide in me, or another translation is remain in me, and I in you. He's basically saying, if you remain in me, if you let me consume you, then I will remain in you. I will be there. I will do it. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine so neither can you unless you abide in me so what is the transformation that you're wanting what is your heart ultimately deeply longing for the freedom the the being free from guilt free from shame having a bright future to look ahead free from worry free from doubt? What are all these things that you are desiring to be free from? Free from the prison of addictions. Free from turning to food to fill you up, which will never fill you up like God can. Free from the body that you feel trapped in that you want to be renewed. So he says, abide in me, remain in me. Come to me. It's only going to happen when we spend time with him. So look at your actions. Look at how you're spending your time. And are you giving him enough room to do any sort of transformation in your life anyway? Or are we saying, God, you know, I'm going to give you the leftovers. I've got a few minutes here and there. I'll give those to you. Maybe if I can fit it in. And oh, pretty soon the whole day goes by, the whole week goes by, the whole month goes by, and all you were having was maybe going to church on Sundays or maybe listening to a a sermon online. And that becomes the fullness of your spiritual life. That's not abiding. That's not remaining. That's giving God sloppy seconds of leftovers of your time. So let's go ahead and look at this seriously and say, if I want this transformation in my life on any level, I must be obeying 
what he is calling me to in his word. It's how I know what he wants me to do. It's my guidebook. And so what does it say? What does he say to me? He says, come to me. He says, abide in me. So until you do those things and do them earnestly and do them often, then you're going to be struggling to achieve the transformation that you're looking for because you're not giving God enough room in your life and in your heart to do the transforming work. And yes, it can be uncomfortable. There are times where it is so glorious and so joyful and exciting. That's what we want. But yes, there's times that are also then confronting or difficult or painful to look at and to open up wounds so that God can come in into your heart and actually fully heal those. We talked in our morning devotional this morning um, in my Facebook group, which if you're not a part of that, I highly recommend you to come join us there. It's on Facebook called Healthy Christian Women. You can find us. And if you do request to be in that group, there's a few initial questions that you need to answer in order for you to be approved. But we had a great devotional this morning, and it was talking about exactly that. We talked about when Paul was talking about the thorn in his side in 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 10, when he's talking about having this thorn in his side that he says was, was given to me by a messenger of Satan to torment me. And he pleaded with God three different times to take it away, but God did not. And God's response was, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. He kept the thorn in Paul's side in order to keep him humble and reliant and dependent upon God, not becoming conceited in the revelations that God had given him, in the the deep wisdom and knowledge that he was given, he knew, God knew in his wisdom that with all of Paul's knowledge that he already had, that it would be easy for him to then become conceited and then for others to begin to possibly even worship Paul because they saw this power and authority in him. And so God did not remove the thing that he was begging him to be removed because God knew that it was actually in his best interest in order to keep him fully connected to God, needing the grace of God, needing to be covered by him in order to fulfill the ministry. And so we were talking this morning about how sometimes what if God is not intervening on our behalf when we are asking for him to deliver us from temptations and to deliver us from these difficult things that we're dealing with and these these different things that we're feeling bound to in our health and um, you know physical addictions and all these things. And but the thoughts of, but what if God is purposefully not taking it away yet or ever? Because he knows that that is in our best interest because, He's doing something with it. So thinking about us needing to be in a place of trusting God in all things, in all circumstances, regardless of whether they look good or bad on the outside, that we praise him just the same because he is God and we are not. And he is the one and the only one that is worthy and deserving of our praise for all things. And so there could be reasons unknown to us. Maybe he's protecting us from something. I shared how I felt like there's certain times where God has kept things from me in my own physical transformation and in full deliverance in certain areas. Because if if I had been completely free and delivered in that time, I would get prideful. I would also get conceited. I have dealt and struggled with those things in the past, and God knows that. And so in order to protect me sometimes... He could be not removing those things that we wish that he would. But what we really just need to get to the point of is understanding that no matter what, it is still our job to be abiding in him, to knowing that his grace is sufficient for us. That is ultimately all we need. And he desires to have us grow closer and closer in relationship with him so that we can continue to be like that mirror holding up that reflection as we are being transformed into the image of God in that reflection and then shining that out for others to see. That is ultimately what he's wanting because 
God wants to have himself be glorified for all people so that all may come to know him. And he uses us to be a part of that process, which is amazing. But it is ultimately not for our selfish ambitions in order to be transformed. It is so that when in his timing and when he deems it is right and appropriate for us, that whatever he does in our life is to give him back the glory, is to show others that his grace was sufficient, is so that we can therefore not take any credit for our own transformation, but all the credit has to go to him. God does all things to bring glory to himself. That is how holy, that is how worthy he is. So sometimes we need to look at our struggles and our desire for transformation in a different way. That in all of God's sovereignty, seeing the future, seeing all the possibilities that could happen in our life, knowing that in this moment, he's choosing to answer or not answer a particular prayer request that we may have because he knows there is either still a refining work that he's wanting to do in that area. There's still something that he's wanting to grow or refine or purify in you, growing and developing of your character, of your perseverance, everything growing into more and more likeness of his son, Jesus Christ. And then in the time, in the right time, when he deems it's right, then your transformation will be complete in that area or you will have made a huge leap in that area, but the only one who's going to get the credit for it was him. That is why sometimes I think we feel that we wait, that why God, why do you wait till the very last minute to finally come through? And we get frustrated in that. But it's because he is desiring to grow our dependence on him and then desiring to give himself the glory and show himself even more when there could be no other possible explanation but him. So sometimes we, we make it have to wait to that level when we feel so desperate. But what if we didn't feel so desperate for it? What if we knew that in all things he was going to be working for our good, whether we saw it or not? What if we had that level of faith and trust? then we wouldn't even need to get to the point of desperation where we felt like God was waiting till the last minute to show out. We would be already constantly living in that place of full surrender and a full dependence and reliance on him now. And then just living in that way rather than having to have that be the thing that happens on the rare occasion, not the thing that is our norm. So when we think about allowing transformation to take place in our lives, I really just want to impress upon you, transformation will take place when God deems it is appropriate for you. And in the process, it is our job to be coming to him, to be abiding in him. All the more in the in-between time, that is a part of our transformation, is our own growth in the process. So my prayer for you ladies today is that we would stop questioning God's process and that we would just fully dive in to living a life where our norm is just to rely on him, where our norm is to be abiding in him, where we are creating our schedules around spending time with him rather than giving him the leftovers when everything else is completely full and we are exhausted. That's not doing justice to what God deserves from us. He deserves everything. It is because he first loved us that we are to love him back. And how do you love someone? How do you show someone you love them? By spending time with them, by wanting to be with them voluntarily, not by waiting until the very last minute before we call on someone or by giving them the smallest portion of our leftovers of our schedule, that doesn't show love, does it? So allowing God's transformation work in your life is going to come from the growth that you're going to do in the process to, uh, to grow and to allow God to transform your life more because you've given him more time in your, in your life. You've given him more space in your life in order to work rather than squeezing him out to where he has little to no space to even do anything. Speaking of transformation, 
if you are looking for a way to further your own transformation in a supportive and loving atmosphere, an atmosphere created for vulnerability and intimacy of the deep things that we go through, then that's why I've created my Beautiful You program. And it's not just the program itself. Of course, the program is great, and it guides you in this process of of uncovering and opening these layers so that God can come in and you can work with him through that. The program itself is great, but what's really, really amazing, the thing that is the most transformative is the group, the community, the women that are together going through this. It's one of the most powerful things that I can add in this program is including that private exclusive community just for the women that are doing this deeper work, the women that are desiring to grow closer to God in that way, in that very, very intimate and special way. We need to do that in community. We need a safe place to share with others what's really going on on the inside, to share with others the highs and the lows, the ups and the downs, and where God is really working, and so that we can come alongside one another one another to pray for one another and support and celebrate. We need that. We were not ever meant to go through anything alone, let alone a complete life transformation that was meant to be done and celebrated in community. And so the private community that is built into the program is, is much more the most valuable thing of the entire thing. And so in order to preserve that, almost like the sacredness of this, of the community of women that are ready to go and open themselves in this transformation process, in order to preserve that, then I am no longer opening this program just for anybody to join. It's definitely not a, you know, if you have the money to to join it, then let anybody in. It's definitely going to the place of, if, if that's what you're looking for, then contact me specifically and let's talk about it. Let's talk about what your needs are and, and where you're looking to grow and what, what areas God really needs to do a work in you so that I can let you know if that particular program is the right fit for you. And so it's becoming more of a, I've got to keep it protected and be very selective about who comes into it because the community is the most critical part of that entire program. And when you are a part of it, then you are are a lifetime partner in it. And so you get that community from here on out. It's not for a specific amount of period of time and then you're pushed out. And so that's what's so beautiful too. It's like growing these lifelong sisterhoods, these bonds of celebrating with one another and knowing some deeper things that maybe other people in your life don't even know. And also being able to celebrate on the most you know intimate levels with one another as we do transform together. And so that's called my Beautiful You program. And if you're interested in that, then uh, send me a, a private message either on Facebook through Messenger or through, uh, you can email me at melody at fitplusfaith.com, all spelled out, fitplusfaith.com. And um, if you're on Instagram, you can look me up on Instagram as well and uh, send me a direct message. So there's a few different ways where we can talk specifically about, is that the right next step for you? Is that the appropriate scenario for you to be in, in order to help you move forward in your transformation as well. So definitely just wanted to let you know what is available when you're ready to go on that next step of your own transformation and knowing that you don't have to do it alone and you were never meant to do it alone. So, wow, so much good stuff today, ladies. I hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you're at in the world. And um, man, just let, let these things seep into your heart today and blessings upon you as you continue to take it seriously, allowing God more time and space in your life so that you can experience more of his transformation like nothing else you would be able to ever take credit for on your own. All right, ladies, blessings upon you. Have a wonderful rest of your day. In Jesus' name, bye. Thanks for listening. Remember to subscribe and join me next week for the next episode of the Healthy Christian Women Podcast.
inspiring Christian women to live healthier in their mind, body, and spirit. One day at a time. Grab your complimentary mind, body, and spirit detox checklist at healthychristianwomen.com slash detox. That's healthychristianwomen.com forward slash detox.